Mr. Wicker's Window, Chapter 6, Part 2. You're not here, he said aloud. Oh, yes, I am, said Mr. Wicker's voice. Look on the table. Chris looked on the table. A bowl of flowers stood in the center. A small silver tray with a finely blown glass and a round-bellied silver pitcher of water stood at one side. A few leather-bound books were all else to be seen except, if one could count that, a blue bottle fly that buzzed, lit on the flowers, and buzzed again. It's not fair! Jerry challenged aloud. You've got some trick hiding place. You're just not here. Yes, I am came the voice. I am within the reach of your hand, Christopher, Mr. Worker told him, and I will reappear in whatever part of the room you wish. Choose. Chris looked around him and then pointed to the end window. There, he said. By the window, there's nothing anywhere around it. Come back there. Very well sounded Mr. Wicker's deep new voice. The blue bottle fly buzzed upward from the table, flew directly at Chris's nose, hit it, flew around his head, and bumped into his ear. Darn that old fly! Chris muttered and made a grab at it. The blue bottle buzzed toward the window, swirled about, hit Chris on the nose again with its remarkable stupidity, and blundered off once more toward the window. Chris ran after it, saw it on a pane of glass, swooped her down and felt the angry wings and heard the enraged buzz in his cupped hand. But before he could squeeze or squeeze the fly or open his hand to let it free, Mr. Micker stood before him and Chris found himself holding on to the tail of Mr. Wicker's coat. And what did you think of that trick? asked Mr. Wicker, smiling. Mr. Wicker's window... Chapter 6, Part 2